Death is the ultimate finality, which is why it can give a story so much more weight and make the stakes feel high. Occasionally, it seems obvious to audiences that characters have met their maker and there's no debate to be had. Except, in some cases, fans can be dead wrong. Thank you, I'll be here for the next 10 minutes or so. Even when it seems there's no way back, writers will carefully plan or create loopholes in order to surprise us with returns. This list will explore the characters we could have sworn had met their untimely demise, but as it turns out, we were mistaken. Taken. When it comes to character deaths or near shaves, spoiler warnings are in full effect. I'm CypherWhatCulture.com and these are 9 movie characters you didn't realise didn't die. Number 9. Killmonger – Black Panther Black Panther's setting and cast made it a runaway success and a deeply important moment for Marvel fans from all walks of life. Wakanda Forever was everywhere for a while and its two male leads, Chadwick Boseman and Michael B. Jordan, became megastars. Despite being a murderous warrior and terrorist, fans were saddened to see antagonist Killmonger go at the end of Black Panther thanks to a sympathetic and powerful portrayal by Jordan. Thankfully, however, it seems as though we might not have seen the last of him. On the red carpet for the 2019 Screen Actors Guild Award, Angela Bassett, who played Ramonda in Black Panther, was asked if everyone was going to return for the immediately greenlit sequel. Playing coy, she answered, I assume so, before her husband, fellow actor Courtney B. Vance, interrupted to give Killmonger fans hope. Go ahead and say it, yes, he chimed in. Everyone will be there, including Michael B. As noted by Bassett herself, and observed by Black Panther viewers, we didn't see Killmonger's outright death. Sometimes you have to follow the adage of if we didn't see a body, and it seems Courtney B. Vance knows something we don't. Considering the weight Jordan brought to the role, it would be a crime if we never saw Killmonger again. Number 8. Creighton Duke – Jason Goes to Hell – The Final Friday the ninth film in a franchise that seemingly doesn't know when to stay dead, Jason Goes to Hell is one of the lower ranked of Jason's murder spree escapades. Critics called it incoherent and gratuitous. Fans call it the one with a bounty hunting cowboy. Whilst groups of horny teenagers make appearances for Jason to cleave his way through, the film's true hero is Stephen Williams' take on Creighton Duke. Aware that Jason can only be killed by a family member, Creighton makes it his duty to seek down someone who can finally put a stop to this slasher madness. Duke seems to meet his end at the hands of the world's most powerful bear hug, which breaks the cowboy's back and he drops to the floor, never to be seen from again. However, director Adam Marcus had plans for the character, which is why fans never saw actual proof of his death. In a 2018 podcast appearance, Marcus remarked that he had intentionally avoided showing the lights going out in Duke's eyes, as he wanted to revisit the character as part of his own spin-off. Considering Jason Goes to Hell's general audience reaction, it's probably not likely that Stephen Williams will be donning the 10 gallon for another adventure anytime soon. At least we know for sure that he survived, even if he might need a chiropractor. Number 7. Nicky Parsons – Jason Bourne Nicky Parsons is the only character not named Jason Bourne to appear in all four major Bourne films, not in including the 2012 offshoot Legacy, and acts as Bourne's most valued confidant. Expertly portrayed by Julia Stiles in every appearance, she was a true mainstay of the series. Audiences thought they had seen the last of her in 2016's Jason Bourne when she is shot and dies in the arms of the titular protagonist, so it was surprising when Nikki was suddenly and rather inexplicably revived for, of all things, a Universal Studios attraction. The Bourne Stuntacular, which might be the greatest theme park attraction name ever, is a canonical part of the Bourne universe, as Nikki references her perceived death in the final film. She never quite explains how she survived, just that following the event she went into hiding to keep her distance from Bourne. Nikki briefs the audience on the mission ahead before the Bourne Stuntacular launches off into 30 minutes of onstage choreographed fights and stunt driving. Arguably, it's pretty cheap to undermine a character's death in a major motion picture in order to sell a tourist attraction. After all, a show with a name as good as the Bourne Stunt-tacular should be able to sell itself on that alone. Number 6. Robert Neville – I Am Legend Playing the character of virologist Robert Neville, who accidentally triggers the near extinction of humanity when looking to cure cancer, I Am Legend allowed Smith to play a range of emotions in a very lonely and distressing world full of vampiric monsters. The picture ends with Neville protecting the cure he's worked so hard for by pulling a grenade pin and sacrificing himself. However, there exists an alternative ending with a much more interesting and less explosive note. Neville apologises to the leader of the Undead Horde for becoming a monster in the eyes of the infected, 
find some kind of peace with them and leaves to start a new life. For years, debate raged about which ending was better, but it was generally regarded that Neville's self-sacrifice was canon. After all, that's the way the film ended in cinemas and when audiences pushed play at home. That may no longer be the case, however, as a sequel was officially announced from the studio in March 2022. But that's fine, zombie movies often have sequels with brand new casts, right? However, in this instance, it seems we may be getting a much more direct follow-up, as Will Smith has signed on to reprise the role. Ergo, it seems that the alternative cut may be the ending that gets continued. Number 5. Maximus Gladiator out of all the films that need a sequel, Gladiator is hardly on the wish list of many movie fans. Not because the first film wasn't excellent, but in fact because it was so perfect that it's troublesome to consider how it could be continued. Also, importantly, because the picture's leading character met his emotional end in the film's final moments. In the award-winning tale of Betrayal and Redemption, Maximus Decimus Meridius loses his family and becomes a slave. Fighting his way through the Roman pit, Maximus finally succeeds in his quest for revenge, even though it literally kills him. After years of discussion about the follow-up, Ridley Scott still intends to forge ahead to make a Gladiator 2. Set 25 to 30 years after the events of the original film, the sequel will centre on Lucius, the son of Maximus's former lover. Whilst that all makes sense, a statement in March 2017 from Scott shocked many. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, the director stated he'd figured out how to bring Maximus back. Crow is at least in talks to work on the production, although exactly in what function remains to be seen. Whether Crow signs on to play the role once more or not, we know that somewhere out there exists a script where Maximus returns. Number 4. Two-Face – Batman Forever Despite being a wacky and ultimately fun movie, a lot of comic book fans have a lot of bones to pick with Joel Schumacher's Batman Forever. A major plot thread of the film is Batman's code of conduct, and how Bruce has to tell his new sidekick Robin that killing isn't worth the pain it causes. Driven by vengeance, Robin is sure to kill Two-Face, responsible for the deaths of his family, given the opportunity. Instead, Batman swoops in and takes that chance from him. Dent falls down a pit so large that audiences had to assume it killed him, prompting the question of what Batman had spent so long waffling on about if he was just going to off Two-Face himself. In the DVD commentary for Batman Forever, director Joel Schumacher was rather firm in his stance that Batman shouldn't kill his villains. Quite how that aligned with the scripted ending of the film we don't know, but at least Schumacher agreed that it didn't sit well with the character, which is exactly why Harvey Dent's iconic costume can be seen in the next film. In Batman and Robin, as Bane breaks into Arkham Asylum to retrieve Dr. Freeze's wares, we can briefly see the double-sided suit. Schumacher says that this was done to imply that Dent survived the fall and was carted off to Arkham. Number 3. Diane, Shaun of the Dead the 2004 genre smash zombie rom-com Shaun of the Dead is loaded with trivia. For example, did you know that characters' names tend to imply their fate? Liz lives, Phil gets killed, Ed is dead, and so on? One of the core cast actually subverts this, however, as Diane does not in fact die. The group's plan to wait for the zombie apocalypse to blow over from the inside of the Winchester pub goes awry when the uptight David stands too close to a window. Suddenly grabbed by ghoulish hands, he is quite literally pulled apart by zombies. Aghast, girlfriend Diane goes out into the night brandishing David's severed leg like a club and it's the last we see of her on screen, bringing all cinema goers to the conclusion of an unseen demise. However, tucked away in the extras of the DVD release are a few comics that answer hanging plot threads including Diane's fate. As as narrated by Lucy Davis herself, Diane managed to outrun the zombie horde, climb a tree, and wait out the next few days until it was safe. How exactly? By easing her boyfriend's severed leg. Considering she's enough of a survivalist to be perfectly content with resorting to feasting on human flesh when necessary, it's suddenly no wonder that the quirky Diane made it through the zombie apocalypse. Number 2. Colonel Quaritch, Avatar Despite the 13-year wait between the original and the first of Avatar's long-awaited line of sequels, the majority of the main cast have been signed on for the long haul. Even actors who play deceased characters will be returning, such as the case as Sigourney Weaver in an RV role. This also includes Stephen Lang, who played antagonist Miles Quaritch. As colonel of the private military, Quaritch is at the head of the conflict between humanity and the Na'vi. Naturally, as the film reaches its crescendo, he falls to two well-placed arrows in the chest, stumbling inside his giant giant mech, he eventually crashes to the ground and the heroes go on to push back the threat to their land. 
In late 2020, James Cameron, however, revealed that Quaritch's grand death scene wasn't the last of him when he confirmed that Lang had not just signed on to return for the sequels, but to do so as the same character. Lang himself said in a following interview after filming the majority of his live-action content for Avatar 2 and 3 that it was gratifying to explore more of who Quaritch is as a character. After eight delays, Avatar Way of the Water is finally due to release in December 2022, so it won't be long until we all find out how the Colonel survived his demise. Number 1. M. Bison – Street Fighter If you like ridiculous B-movies, then chances are you love the 1994 adaptation of the Street Fighter video game series. Jean-Claude Van Damme, Kylie Minogue, and the late great Raoul Julia in his last appearance star in this loud, cheesy action fest that bombed on release. In the current age of cinema, we've been trained like animals to wait patiently for those special thanks to roll so that we might bask in the glow of the post credit scene. This wasn't always the case, which is why when it comes to the classics, you may well have missed some film's final notes. Street Fighter ends with a scene that shows M. Bison's tyranny is far from over. A gloved fist smashes through the rubble of his destroyed command center, and we get a comical look at Bison's computer terminal that clicks on World Domination Replay before the film cuts to black. Because of Julia passing before Street Fighter came to theaters, the sequence was removed from the film to show a little respect to the situation. Thus, fans only knew that Bison had survived the film's story in home releases. Naturally, of course, Street Fighter never got a direct sequel, but Julia's committed performance to such nonsense is so beloved that it brings a smile to your face to see his bison rise once more. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below and any other movie characters that you can think of that most people think are dead, but they're not. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe and hit that notification bell. I've been Cypher Watt Culture and have a good week.